Live from San Francisco, California, The Cube, covering Mark Logic World 2015. Brought to you by Mark Logic. Now, here are your hosts, Jeff Frick and Jeff Kelly. Everybody, we're live here at Mark Logic World 2015 in San Francisco. I'm Jeff Kelly from Wikibon. I'm here with my co-host Jeff Frick, uh, yeah. and we're joined by our next guest, Gene Bishop. He's the Vice President of Technology at ALM. Gene, your first time on the Cube. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. It's great to be here. I appreciate it. So uh, obviously, we got a lot of activity happening here at the show right now. I think uh, cocktail hour just started. So, um, but but I think it's a good, good segue to tell us a little bit about you know the, sh the, the show today, the event, and kind of what you're hearing here. What's getting you excited? Well, uh, I think the show has been—it's uh, been terrific. The event really has been. Uh, I know for um, one of the best parts for me is to be able to see how how others are using the technology. Right, uh, for a long time. Uh, I, I seem like the only champion in my company for, for Mark Logic, right? And, and Gary Vidal, who, was, uh, who helped us present today, actually worked for ALM uh, back in the day and pleaded with me, Gene, you have to use this technology, you have to use it. I'm like, Gary, you know, what am I going to do? I got 19 technologies we're looking at. But I was really glad um, to see where he's come, but where the product has come from now. And, um, and to see like the, the problems that, that we solve or we have solved at ALM, and then to see what other folks are, are using the technology for and to solve their problems, it's to me it's fascinating. It really is. Technology's come such a long way. So, what was your favorite story from uh, from another practitioner today? Uh, I loved I loved the um, the uh, Snap on Tools story where they were talking about um, the guy calling into the radio program about his Ford F one fifty, right? So he calls in and he says, "I've got a." you know, a 1980 Ford F-150, and the guy, the, the announcer says, it's the thermostat. You know, I didn't even tell him what it was that he was looking for, but it's the thermostat, you know, and it, it was a combination of the fact that he could put all of this data together. He was an expert, but he had seen all of the data, and he knew that at a certain temperature, where the guy was calling from, from Maine, at, on this on this year of, of Ford F-150, it was the thermostat that was a problem, and I just thought it was, it was very cool. Yeah, absolutely. So tell us a little bit about ALM for our audience who might not be familiar with ALM. Uh, tell us about the organization and a little bit about your role. Okay, so ALM is uh, ALM Media. It was a company that was built by acquisition. Uh, there were uh, a bunch of regional newspapers, magazines, websites that were put together um, under the, the single company of ALM. Um, it, uh, they, they sort of... Uh, tried to standardize as much as we could on different technologies because we were putting all these different content systems together, billing systems and all that. Uh, we were uh, private equity, held by private equity. Uh, the Wasserstein Group is actually the group that held us originally. Sold us in uh, 2009 to uh, a different private equity group that held an international media company as well. So there were these big plans to put these two companies together and sort of have son to son you know, this, this, this media giant that we were going to be, two very different models for the company. Um, the uh, Apex, who is the private equity holder, uh, held on to us, divested itself of incisive media, and then, um, lo and behold, last summer, we were sold, again, back to Wasserstein, the company that put us, that, that originally invested in putting us together. Um, so now we're, we're back to the mothership, and, uh, <laughs> We've been going through some acquisitions in the last two months. My role at ALM, uh, I started in 2006 as a director of application support, and which included uh, enterprise applications and the help desk. And then gradually, as the years have gone on, I've taken on more and different responsibilities. Right now, I have, I'm in charge of all technology uh, that, that uh, crosses the enterprise, all of the uh, uh, production applications, all the development, uh, the help desk, the infrastructure, the networking, all of that falls under what I do. Uh, last year when I was at uh, presenting at, at Mark Logic, they asked me to put a slide up of what, my, what I thought my role was at ALM. And I used a clip from uh, Pulp Fiction, which is uh, Winston Wolf. I kind of think of what I have to do as the cleaner <laughs> Winston Wolf at ALM. So uh, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's fun and challenging, but, but you know, I, I sort of have to get in and look at situations. Sometimes you have short-term solutions you have to put in place. 
and then other times it's it's sort of broader. You have to look sort of down the road. We'll talk about some of those challenges around. Uh, as a media company, you've got a lot of content. You're trying to deliver that to your to your audience. Um, talk about. Uh, obviously, we're here at MarkLogic World. You're using MarkLogic. Talk a little bit about how MarkLogic's helping you build applications to deliver to your, essentially, to your audience. Sure. Um, well, we, we used uh, MarkLogic in 2006 originally just so we could put all of our content together. Well, we could never produce that in, in one place or time uh, previously. So uh, we invested in you know, a moderate investment in MarkLogic. We called it the golden bucket. Uh, it was a place where we were going to be able to put all of our content and pull it out whenever we needed to. The Golden Bucket is great. As a matter of fact, I still have a version of the Golden Bucket in my shop, and it's almost nine years later. But uh, what it did for us was it, it gave us a window into our content. And, and we were producing that content online, in print, in some of our research products. And being able to put that in a single place now gave us the opportunity to say, well, maybe instead of just having it in one repository, why don't we try and build a product with it? So the next step in our evolution for MarkLogic was really to take that content, maybe add some other content into it, and produce a, a product called Smart Litigator, which was a regionally focused research tool for small to mid-sized law firms. Um, a, a nice, clean sort of interface, uh, combining the content that we created from our New York Law Journal product or our, our uh, legal intelligence or product in Philadelphia or the New Jersey Law Journal project in, product in New Jersey and combining that with, uh, with court information and research information and uh, helping small to mid-sized law firms sort of gauge their cases, right? And it wasn't sort of, it was not a replacement for some of the LexisNexis or the West tools, but it was an embarkation point for them to be able to do research on you know, a case that they were offering. Well, now that we started to build this product, um, we were coming up to a, a licensing agreement with, with some, some of our, in some cases, competitors in some things and partners in others. Um, and a long negotiation went in to, uh, to take our archive content and provide it to uh, a licensed vendor. Once the vendor was selected, uh, we had about six weeks, five to six weeks, to deliver all of our archive content to that vendor in a fashion that they were that, that they wanted to receive it. So, so now you're starting to see a pattern, right? I, I have a problem I have to solve. I have a technology that has helped me solve those problems. And now I've got another problem I have to solve with this licensing of content. So we took the content in the repository some other content that they had purchased as part of this license agreement and added it in, and then develop pipelines out so that we could deliver the content. Not just to that license partner, but now to any license partner we wanted to. So kind of a, a business problem, if you will, led to an opportunity to, to build a larger Absolutely. product. Uh, and I'm imagining the content is in multiple formats and different styles. Talk a little bit about uh, your challenges associated with bringing all that kind of content uh, in different formats together in a single repository. Yeah, it, 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 I think the challenge really becomes um, because none of it was truly standardized, even within our own organization, right? We may have been using similar content management systems, but no one was marking the content the same way. So now, okay, people will say, well, th th we've got questions all the time. Gene, you have, you have all of the content, so why can't you just spit it out for me? <laughs> Well, spitting it out means you actually have to call it the same thing or organize it in some fashion or categorize it, put a taxonomy around it so this way you can extract that information. Mm -hmm. So some of the challenge was looking at how we built that content, maybe streamlining those processes. And then once we had the content in place, actually putting taxonomy around it, but getting the business involved to say, well, what is our taxonomy, right? How do the marketing people want to use it? Do we, do we use a taxonomy for um, newspaper content different than we might use for books content? Well, sure we would. Right. Because we're going to be delivering it in, in sort of different, different formats and different stores. So uh, it became not only a learning process from a technology standpoint, but it became a learning process from the business side as well. So Gene, talk a little bit about, you know, one of the big themes we, we see at a lot of shows is, is the, uh, the consumerization of IT. And really in terms of the expected behavior of applications based on my interface with Facebook and Amazon and, and Google. And how really 
you know, kind of the, there's before Google and after Google. And right. the expected behavior to be able to get that information, as you just said, well, of course, can I just search and find it? And, and, and how has that changed the way you guys do business? How's that changed your customer expectations? And how are you, you know, adapting to that kind of, I, I assume, a much higher kind of expected value or expected performance to get that data out more easily? Well, I, I think what you realize is that you can you can spend a lot of time, you can spend a lot of time on the details of each piece of content, right? Um, but you'll miss the big picture for, for the value that the content can really provide. And I, I think the first time that we tried to do taxonomy, we sort of looked at it and said, oh, we have to get it right. We have to get it completely right, right away. So we put a three month project together and we built a taxonomy and it was awful. It was just awful. Right, it focused on a very narrow por portion of our business. Um, so we took a different approach that said, you know what, let's sort of look across our businesses because I have to provide it, you know, I, I, I'm going to have to provide this content not just to internal marketers, but I have to provide it to what my customers want that content to be. And I want to be able to build products for new products for what those customers are going to ask us for. So now, you talk about sort of raising the bar on it, right? You look at the old content that we had and say, well, all right, so this is the value that I can get out of that old content. I can go back, I can re-tag it, sort of taught me about what we had to do for enrichment against our content, things that we do manually in process and then things that we can do sort of automatically after process. Um, but it, it, it became, how can we enrich the content so that when I, when I, when I pull it up, because I want to be able to, um, to do product offerings. I want to be able to do recommendations for content. Right. And all of that is based on this Google world, right? This Amazon marketplace of, hey, you looked at this, now how about this? Right. Well, right. we want to do that too. Um, and I think the, with the way that we apply sort of the underlying technologies, the foundation that we have with MarkLogic, and then being able to couple all of that and then deliver content in new ways and in, in new formats um, accurately, right, to reflect um, what law firm someone works for. How many, you know, maybe maybe someone works for Dewey, Cheatham, and Howe, right? And, and we wrote four articles on Dewey, Cheatham, and Howe in the last month or so. Well, if I've got, if you're logging in and I know you're part of Dewey, Cheatham, and Howe, Hey, these are the last four articles we wrote about do we cheat them and how. Right. So it it it, it makes it makes what it makes the content that we generate more valuable. Right. Right. But it also makes the experience of the user more valuable, right? More personalized. Right. So I think what we've learned over the course of time is that the more refined we can be about our content and the more personalized we can get with our content the more applicable that content becomes for an end user and then for an entity that that end user may work for. Right. right? Mm -hmm. Whether it's a court or a law firm or a company. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now the other interesting table that you, or seat at the table that you've had for your whole career is, you know, we always talk about digital transformation of business. And obviously the media business and the print business before you had content management systems to manage the print. Now you've seen that transformation where it's not only to, to create the output, but the digital asset itself and then those content management systems can now be delivered on a number of formats, a number of, of, uh, of methods. So I wonder if you could talk a little bit about the evolution you know, of that digital assets, not to drive the production of a newspaper or a journal or whatever, but actually to be a core asset in and of itself that might be dis dis uh, dispersed or re-aggregated or recollated in a number of different ways. Well, I mean, that's, you know, I think the, the golden rule in media is reuse, right? Because you don't want to have to touch the content so many times. You, you, you touch it so many times to publish it that if you can get it and reuse it in whatever format it is, um, that uh, you're going to get more value out of that content, right? Now, when I was talking about personalization before, it, if I start to build an archive of that content and I can enrich that content and then surface that content again and again and again, well now, I've, I've, I've crossed that threshold into, into more value for it, right? Um, the other part of, of sort of any of those digital assets is that it not only plays into the products that you're building sort of right now, but we learned it in licensing, right? Now all of a sudden, I provide it online and I do it 
I, I do it in print and online, and now that licensed content becomes a product in and of itself with value. Right. So the more that I can even connect the pieces of what's in that digital asset management system to the content management that's over here, maybe to the customer that's over there, I think you got something pretty good. Right, you know? right. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't think you really get to start to do that until you make the connections between the pieces of content and the relationships for search and, and, and just uh, sort of surfacing what, uh, what those categories can be out of that content. So. Well, we've only got time for one more question. So, if you had to give one piece of advice to practitioners out there, we talked about this in the panel, I'll put you on the spot again, but one piece of advice to uh, practitioners who are maybe struggling with um, you know, the deluge of data, the different varieties they've got to deal with, um, what would it be in terms of their either their approach, maybe a technology piece of advice, or even a cultural piece of advice? What would you, what would you share with the audience? Well, um, I think what I said in the panel was, you know, don't limit yourself. And I also think, you know, I think that there's a piece of, of information that came out that said you want to know where the end of the bridge is, right? And, and I think that, that's important, but don't be so committed to the end of the bridge that, that you're not willing to change mm -hmm. how you get there, right? I mean, you, you really, I, I think for us, if there's one thing that I've learned about Mark Logic, really one thing, is that um, you, you, can't, you can't focus on just the fact that it's an XML document repository, right? It serves me in so many different ways, and it, it has done it for me up through the licensing piece right up until what we're doing today, right? The whole idea of building an MDM solution around, you know, our content, not just our customer, but around our customer and our content and our products, wow. I start to look at the power that's involved in that in thinking, well, now I can do analysis and create other products just around the fact that I'm putting all of that together. Mm -hmm. So who'd have thunk, mm -hmm. right, that if I was building a golden repository, a golden bucket right. in 2006, you know, no matter how great or fantastic the dreams might have been, that I could really put that in place. Right. Now, I didn't do it all at one time. So the other piece of advice is be willing to take bites out of it. Right? Don't don't think you got to solve the whole nut all at one time. Right. Right. You know, because you because you you may frustrate yourself. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, very good yeah. advice, Gene. Thanks so much for coming on the queue. We appreciate it. I hope we'll have you back again soon. Oh, I'd love to come back. It was really great to be here. You guys are terrific. Well, Super. Thank thanks. you so much, and thanks for being here. And thank you for watching. So stick around. We're going to be right back with our next guest here live at Mark Logic World 2015. Right after this.